Welcome to Elected, a podcast for women in and around politics. I'm your host, Sarah Elder Chaminara, and this week, our guest is Amrit Brar. Amrit is the first in the series Amplify, where we amplify women who need amplification. In the spirit of reconciliation, I acknowledge that I live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, Kainai, Pekani, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Amrit is born and raised in BC and has always been political. She first got involved in municipal politics at the age of 17 and found her way to the Federal Liberal Party, where she champions the voices of women, youth, and people from marginalized backgrounds. Amrit is a firm believer in representation in politics and encourages everyone to use their voice at the table. So Amrit, welcome to Elected. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to have a chat with you. Well, I'm excited to be here and I'm so excited to be the first guest of this episode. So um, I'm sure there's so many other women out there that would want to be amplified as well. So I'm excited to hear from them as well. Yes, you don't worry. You're the first 100% <laughs> not the last. And I think you, you might be interested, but I've decided to do another kind of special episode every quarter. It'll be an ally episode. So we'll hear from love it a man who is committed to allyship and championing women in politics in and around that's politics. Amazing. So that's if important. You, and that's so amazing. <laughs> thanks. I'm, I'm excited too. So we have a ways to go until we get to the first quarter of, of that episode, but in the meantime, it's all about you today. So, um, so for those who don't know you can, how did you get your start in youth politics? Because I think there are a lot of youth out there who are curious about how to do it. So please share your journey into how you go from being not political to very political. Yeah, so I think for me, I've always been interested in politics at some point, um, whether it was like just following the news every day or just kind of listening to the um, what my uh, teachers were saying in class in high school. But I really got involved back, oh shoot, when this was like a long time ago, back like when um, the uh, mayor of Kelowna was re- actually was seeking his first election as a mayor. He ran for city councilor first. Um, which I didn't help out in. I was just kind of observing. But um, when he ran for mayor, he was looking for volunteers. Uh, and um, I, I don't know why I said yes, but I said yes. Um, and I put my hat in to help out. So I did a lot of door knocking, um, just kind of a beginning um, beginning thing, that, which I think is a great way to kind of put your feet into the politics is by door knocking. And what made um, him then- special? what 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 got you involved in his campaign specifically i think for me um and you know this and a lot of people know this is that i'm a huge champion for representation um and he was the only person of color running um for office and i thought that was pretty cool that there was like um a guy who had the same colored skin as me um, that was running for office and i was like you know what why not let's just give it a shot and see how it goes Mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, like I said, I was out door knocking. I was meeting with people in the community. I was very terrified um, door knocking at first because I didn't know how it go, uh, how it was supposed to go. And I had a few friends with me, so we didn't really know what to expect. But for the most part, it was a very positive experience that we had, and like that's kind of what caught me coming back for more. I was like, okay, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to talk to people and hear what the, what their issue or what the issues are on their mind. Um, and just listening to what they have to say and how they want to make um, my city better. And then that just kind of just got me going and um, did some door knocking, did some sign waving. And then uh, a few months later, I guess it was a few months a month later, maybe, he became the mayor of Kona. And that was really exciting to be like a part of a first campaign where mayor won. Mm-hmm. Um, very exciting for me. So and then that's when I kind of just stuck, I guess, with it. Um, so yeah, was, that's kind of how I got involved. Was a part of it that you met like-minded people who were who were into campaigning and elections and about um, government and citizenship as well? Did that keep you coming back? I 
think so. I think so. And a lot of it, I mean, these are people like I've never met. I maybe probably knew one or two people on the team and that was it, but they were always trying to get me to come back. Um, and they're like always constantly calling me. My phone was always <laughs> going off. They're like, are you going to come door knock? Are you going to come door knock? And I'm like, yes, yes, I'm coming. Don't worry. Um, so I think a lot of it did have to do with the fact that they were like-minded people that had like same interests as me. They wanted to see um, my city, uh, Kelowna, be better. Um, they wanted to see uh, a bright young leader that was paving the way for a lot of young entrepreneurs, which was pretty cool. And I think that was what just kept coming back was like, A, he was young, B, he had a really good vision, um, and C, just kind of being open and friendly and very personable. Mm. And his name and is, that makes a huge difference. His name is Colin Basra, right? Yes, and he's probably. still the mayor. He's still the mayor. He's still the mayor. Yeah. If this was probably, oh, this is his second time being re- uh, reelected. So, oh. um, he's so you, so you very, worked in, he's very sorry, well liked. he's very well liked. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. I think it's, um, and for anyone who's not familiar with BC, um, like, the lower mainland is very different than the rest of the province. And so West Kelowna is, you know, far enough up that there's, you don't often see actually a lot of diversity in municipal politics yeah. or even in federal or provincial politics. It is still highly dominated by white men. So yeah, exactly. that's, it's a, I, it's, I feel like you kind of have to live in the area to kind of understand the geographic of it mm-hmm. and like why it's been the way it is but it's a very interesting writing and beautiful um, for, i would it, say yes. and beautiful <laughs> and beautiful and very beautiful so you worked on colin bazar's campaign and then you jump over and you take a leap into federal politics provincial politics where do you go next um so i actually got involved with federal politics um we had it back in 2014 I would say that's when he won the nomination um he was uh looking for volunteers and I had a few questions with for him I didn't necessarily know like where I was going at that time who I was going to be voting for um and there were a few issues at that time that I was very very like upset about from the conservative government that I didn't necessarily really like and so I met Stephen Fear, who was the candidate, and he, I brought him up my concerns. And he's just like going away at it for 20 minutes, trying to like say like, no, no, this is what this is what the Liberal Party is doing. This is how it's going to be. And like, I can help. Uh, I can guarantee you that you'll probably this is where you want to be. Huh. And he was right. Um, so I ended up helping him in that election. Um, it was the one election that probably was the longest election in Canadian history. And we ended up winning that writing, um, which was like, I don't know how, but it was very, very surprising. Um, partially, a lot of it just had to do with the fact that our candidate, Stephen Fair, was amazing. Um, and I just went out and door knocked and side and waved and made some phone calls. And it was a really great place to be. And the reason why I came back from it because is because a lot of the campaign um, volunteers that were on Colin's team at that time were also helping out with uh-huh. Steven's team. Um, so I already had that like bond with uh, of friendships that were already there that were telling me to like come back and like let's go out and do stuff. And um, it was a really fun and neat experience, I would say. Huh. And, and then, it's, just, it's been it's been a ride. It's been a ride. <laughs> it has been a ride. That election was very long, very long. Um, it was like almost, if, I think, almost two months or a month and a half. Um, that was a, something a, like that. Yeah, a very long election, and I hope I hope we don't repeat it anytime soon because it was really grueling. Um, right. And, but then he lost, your candidate lost subsequently four years later, his seat. Yeah, in 2019. And I mean, it was one of those things where like, you think about, you're like, oh my gosh, what if I door knocked a bit more? What if I made more phone calls? Um, What if I did this? What if I did that? But at the end of the day, I always say the people have spoken, Um, the People are in charge of who gets elected. You may not agree with mm-hmm. it, and that's perfectly fine. But that's what democracy is for, right? Yeah. Um, 
and I always give props to the volunteers. It's like all of our volunteers, and not just our volunteers, like volunteers from all parties, they were mm-hmm. working their butts off during Everybody this election, does. Right? Everybody wants Everybody their person does. to win. Yeah. they re- all, Everyone think, yeah, tries was, really hard. Yeah. And I was, I think I was talking to you last time about this, about how I think vo- how the grassroots volunteers are the heart of our volunteer, mm-hmm. right? They're the ones that are out there making phone calls. They're the ones that are talking to, um, uh, donors and stakeholders and um, talking to the community to see what's on their mind. And at the end of the day, you can get the messaging right. You can get the strategy right. Um, but if you don't talk to those people and you don't uh-huh. ask for their votes, it doesn't matter, right? GOTV is a big thing. And I'm a yes. firm believer of that. Yes, it is um, huge. It is huge. I don't yeah. think that, which is interesting in the world that we are now in, in a COVID context, it's a lot harder. Like, do you do it? Do you not do it? making that contact is, is challenging, but it's so valuable because, um, I mean, you need to know, I mean, a good campaign, you need to know who's going to be voting for you and if they have voted for you. Exactly. So, exactly. and I can't remember if I, I've sh- yeah. shared this with you, but I spent the morning after that election, the grueling long election of 2015, I, th- did I, in a McDonald's drive through trying to did. order yeah, yeah, I think you did. <laughs> uh, a McMuffin and I started crying <laughs> because I was so upset that the candidate that I was helping Matt Grant in Calgary Confederation, yeah. who was running as a liberal lost. Um, so like we've all been there. Not every, not every campaign is a yeah. winning campaign and the losses are hard, especially when you feel like the person that you're working for is an excellent candidate. That makes it even harder. Yeah, and for sure, I'm like I've always I've been like very big. I've been very vocal about how great of an MP Steve was for those four years that he was the MP. Mm-hmm. He always um he was always there talking to people, sticking um up for what he thought his constituents wanted, not what he wanted. And to me, that just like was like the best ideal MP you would want. Yeah. Um, so it was very sad that he lost. And even the next day, a few of us were just kind of like, just kind of that, like, that actually brings um, up sad that... crying, but we were just like, it's hard. We weren't, we weren't, we were just, yeah, we were just very like, um, uh, we were just very somber. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. The next yeah. day we're like, okay, we're just going to sit here and stare at each other and, yeah, just, which is important because I don't think we talked about the grievance part of a campaign post election. No, right? there is a real everybody. There is a real grievance period, win or lose. I think post campaign because all of a sudden, yeah, your experience is just over, right? And it changes. Like if you win, then you go from you know celebrating to thinking about you know transition into the, into the role for the person, and then if you lose, exactly. you know picking up signs is really hard when you haven't, when things haven't gone your way, <laughs> like exactly. it just makes it even worse of a job. The people, people, yeah. sign people, sign people do, they are, they are they just are, such they key are the people. The they are the stars of the campaign <laughs> because sign, jo- be the sign jobs are the hard signs, ones. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, but I actually want to pick up on a point you just made because it's interesting. I think in the COVID context now, especially bringing, relating it to Alberta, when you said that um, the MP was really great at bringing or being representative of constituent concerns, not necessarily his personal concerns. And I feel like in the COVID context now, if you have an MP or an MLA, um, such as the case in Alberta, where you they're very outspoken against, for example, safety measures, and they say, oh, I'm being, you know, it's my personal concerns as well as, um, you know, the rep- the concerns of my constituents. And then they're not necessarily, you know, on team government or whatever it may be yeah um that can that can be a double-edged sword in terms of being a positive when things are great but also you know being uh, hard to manage and not such a great thing when times are tough has that is yeah. that happening in bc at all for right now in politics are there or is everyone on team let's beat covid I feel like everybody in BC is just on a speed team COVID. They just, mm. everybody just wants to get it done and over with. They want to make sure that people in their ridings or people just all around Canada just feel safe, making sure yeah. that they're getting vaccinated, which is super important. I'm getting vaccinated on Saturday. Oh, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. You can uh, join. I'm, I'm in that. I'm in the half vax club too. So welcome. Welcome to the club. We'll be in the half. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, 
I was joking with my sister. I was like, I feel like we're kind of in this club of being vaccinated, um, which I'm telling everybody else, like, make sure you get vaccinated. But mm-hmm. it's just like one of the cool things you're like, yes, I got vaccinated, right? Now you yeah. go do it. <laughs> Team vaccinated all the way. Um, yeah. So let's fast forward to a more recent time. So you recently had a very exciting victory. So why don't you share what that is? Because I feel like we all need to celebrate it. And even though this is a, it is a partisan, a partisan role within a, within a political party, I feel like this is one of those things that needs to transcend parties and, you know, um, political culture. And we need to celebrate the achievements of women in politics. And so We need to celebrate your achievement, no matter, and I hope everyone does, because um, if we want more women to be in politics, in any capacity, in backrooms and on campaigns, as candidates in the prime minister's office, then then this is the representation that we should celebrate. So why don't you share what your Mm -hmm. awesome win was? Um, So back in April, I got elected uh, by the Liberal Membership Women um, as the organization chair for the National Women's Liberal Commission, which was pretty exciting for me because I didn't know if it was very tough. I didn't know how I was going to do it, um, mostly because the convention was happening online. And uh, for those of you who've ever been to a convention, you know, being in person is like a big thing where you get to meet people and you get to talk to them when you get to like regal them for their votes if you're running for a position or even for a policy that you um, support. And it was just a bit different during this time around. So I was making a lot of phone calls and texting people and like making sure that I could count on their support. And mm-hmm. when they announced my name, I was just like so relieved. And they announced your so name online, right? Not in a room. Online. Yeah. Online. No, online. 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 On like the Thing on the platform and I was like oh my god I actually did it so um it was it was a big relief for me I and I couldn't have done it without a lot of the support that I got from my friends my can give them a shout out let's um, let's give you give your okay, so campaign give team a shout out to like my <laughs> campaign team was um so my comms was Danielle Shea Alliance and then Dan, uh Dania who helped me out with comms from from like making sure my emails were great to make sure my website website was it <clears throat> and Dr. Marina Adshade who actually convinced me to run um she was like you need to do this and she's like if you don't do it you're gonna regret and she was always there for the like every step of the way she was like do you need anything make sure you tell me um, I'm here to support you I'm here whatever you need and I was like yes thank you so much so I'm like so grateful for them and then the other person I want to give a huge shout out to is my GOTV team um Sarah and Julia and Gary who helped me with all the GOTV and making sure that all the women voted for me so Mm -hmm. of course and all the women and um my allies my favorite allies out there Mm -hmm. that were out there um advocating for me and telling me that uh you're gonna get this you got this make sure you go support Amra it was just it was a huge um sigh of relief when like I got to see all these people coming out and supporting me in whatever way that they could so that's so nice I was very excited yeah no I think <laughs> it it's was great very nice. it was very heartwarming yeah no I think it's really special and I think it takes a lot of courage to put your name forward to run for a party position it's something like that I've um I think I only did it as a youth as a youth member um and so I mean it wasn't like very competitive or anything but like what you did was very serious and you ran a serious campaign and because you had a, yeah, a and and you were running against fun. someone and you wanted to win and that's amazing and I always say having a contested race whether it's the nomination or whether it's like at, in, internally is probably the best way to go because you get to see who really wants to position and who really wants to make a difference right um and for the most part the people that are able to get have, have a strong GOTV and talk to people they're the usually ones that are able to get elected Mm -hmm. Um, which I think is amazing. So don't ever say acclamation is the best way to go. It's not. Contested (sighs) races are the best way to go, I would say. Oh, I'm I'm pretty sure that some people wish they were acclamation, like they were just acclamation, like they they won by acclamation. And they're like, wrong. I kind of wish I was saying that first too. I was like, oh my God, that would have saved me the stress. But well, yeah, I mean, like, 
it's you're like, like sitting back easy out. watching everyone campaign. And you're like, oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah. 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 But I'm sure there's pros and cons to each. So, um, and then recently, yeah, exactly. Because I saw on social media that you have an exciting new opportunity, which I'm sure is going to take you far in the political world because you are clearly an all-star volunteer and an all-star political person. And I think a rising star in the BC, or sorry, the BC, the federal liberal party. So, um, oh, thank you. Tell, tell, tell everyone about that. Yeah. So I ended up uh, getting an internship with Minister Tassie's office um, as a comms assistant. So I'm very excited to see how it goes because I've been, um, and most of you you guys probably know this, is that I've been very, um, I'm very into uh, communications and I very much am passionate about it. So like when they were like, hey, you want to take on um, communications with the Tassie's team? And I was like, oh, my God, yes. Like, mm-hmm. I am excited to learn how it goes. So and what, um, is, she, we're ca- what is, remind everyone what she's the minister of? Yeah, she's the minister of labor. Oh, um, yeah, which is yeah, a really key MP portfolio. From, yeah, and especially during, like, now with the COVID happening. So mm. um, I, I wasn't very familiar with the file at first, but I spent, like, first few days just reading into it and like the more I read I was like oh my gosh the labor file is so interesting and just learning the different um codes and whatnot and I was like wow okay this yeah. is cool it's Kinda actually underrated files it's I would say underrated and also highly complicated in terms of stakeholder groups there are a yeah. lot of very very powerful stakeholder groups related to labor um and I think mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of like some ministries are seen as more sexy like dirt ministries yeah. um and the, the, yeah. i think that one kind of falls into the in-between r- world of ministries um and people don't really understand how important it is yeah, unless it's a it's negotiation funny. time <laughs> <laughs> i think it's funny because like everybody like when you talk to like, some of the young people maybe and even older ones they're always like yeah i would love to work for this file i'd like to work for finance i mean don't get me wrong finance is important um well and, and also with you know like an that, incredible right? woman Christina the- for you. yeah exactly yeah. but it's just like the underrated files more like like wage so women and gender equality yeah. or like the minister of labor file or like even canadian heritage like those are all I think those are all such important, and there's more fo- portfolios out there mm-hmm. that are so important that are underrated that need to get more attention, I think, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> no, 100%. And if I was, oh my goodness, I would love to be in charge of um, Canadian heritage because I would be like, <gasps> Me I don't know if I can interfere politically in the Canadian heritage minutes, but I would like to see a lot more of them and like <laughs> one a week. I decree right. one new heritage minute a week because I think <laughs> what would be your what would be your dream uh ministry that you want to take on? Oh, well I appreciate the question um from the member opposite. I know you're doing the que- <laughs> you're doing the questions. No, I appreciate it. Um, to know. Uh so I actually got to not as a obviously not as an elected person, but I actually got to live my dream. My dream job in politics was to work for the Minister of Agriculture. And that was the second okay. minister that I worked for in BC um, from your hometown, Steve Thompson, um, who was the MLA for Kelowna Mission. And after he won in the 20, 2009 election, I think it was 2009, um, he was appointed minister of agriculture. And I was appoint, I was, I was put on his political staff. And that was as I grew up in a you know, in 4-H and kind of like in an agricultural community. Um, And so that was my dream role. So I would love to be the minister of agriculture. I know. And And that's not a ministry that most people want, (laughs) but I do. But it's like such an important portfolio too. You need somebody to look after the agriculture and protect the uh, ALR lands. A hundred percent. Here in BC at least. Um. And for those of you who don't know, ALR is the Agricultural Land Reserve. Oh, <laughs> I would love to talk about this and the differences between the Agricultural Land Commission and the Agricultural Land Reserve. And it's so important where our food comes from and not enough people understand how it goes from field to fork. And I'm yeah, actually, I have a cool. big, I'm a big chant. I'm a big supporter of Lena Popham. Um, 
with the NDP, uh, who took over after She's done the, a wonderful job. She has. She has done a wonderful job. And um, she's BC's first female agricultural minister. And she has done an amazing job. She's a she's got she's a farmer herself and she understands the role. And the things that the NDP have done in that file have been extremely progressive. And they have in they did things that I wish mm-hmm. we, the BC Liberals had done. So I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm totally team Lana Popham. <laughs> Lana, if you're listening, you're number no, one fan. Been, yeah, she's been great. Yeah. Bring her onto the podcast. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. I totally need to. And then we can talk about the, you know, because when I met her, I was in government and she was in opposition and now I'm outside government and she's the minister. Um, and she actually has your t-shirt, the one you're wearing right now. She has the woman's place place t-shirt. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So keeping it on BC, as we wrap up yesterday, there was some major news in BC politics. Um, Former BC liberal minister, Kevin Falcon and MLA, Michael Lee announced that they are getting into the leadership race for the, to take over the role of leader for the BC liberals. Um, Mm -hmm. They join Gavin Dew and Ellis Ross um, if there's any names that I'm forgetting, um, what are you, what's your take on those people in, in BC politics and what do you want to see as a young person in the Okanagan? What do you want to see, um, yeah. in terms of representation from them and then from the NDP as well? So I think it's very important that we have a leader that takes the bar- party in a new progressive way. Um, whether it's and attracting people from all over the part or from all over the spectrum. So like, not just like from one certain area, but like literally everywhere. And for me, um, I'm just going to say this is that Mm. I'm supporting Gavin Dew um, for BC uh, leadership. Um, Mostly because he's like, he's the type of guy that gets it. He's young. He's kind of served all over the place when it comes to like agriculture and the tech sector. Um, And for him, it's all about family. And when I talked, when I had the opportunity to chat with him, um, I was instantly sold at the fact that he was like, yes, I believe in environment. And I believe that like young people need to have a voice. And then if you look around his like campaign team, there's a lot of young people that are helping out that are, um, that are running his campaign, um, which I think is fantastic. And so if you guys haven't checked him out, do <laughs> take a look at his website, www.gavindeer.ca. Do take a look do. at the, I do. Do. <laughs> he has the he has one of those names that's just perfect for politics. But Kevin Falcon exactly. also kind of has a perfect name for for politics, like Falcon. Falcon and Do. Yeah. They're just, I don't know. Some people are born with funny, like, like great names. Gavin for politics. His his campaign team is known as the Do Curl. Oh. Um, so uh for all of the you uh listeners out there if you want to get involved in it <laughs> pick a candidate i mean honestly pick a candidate that you think will lead the party in the best direction and the best interest for our um for our party for me it's gavin do um for other people i know there's a few people helping out with kevin falcon's team um which it's funny because i know like i was talking to some of them and they're like yeah yeah we're just we're just we don't know when he's announcing it but i think we're we're gonna help him out and i'm like why don't you just tell me that he's running for leadership and just yeah. throw it out there already. everybody has their strategy Amrit, and you know yeah. they don't want to be it's very strategic and everything's a big secret until it's not a secret but i think um i think it's going to be really interesting and i mean we talked about the federal election being really long the leadership race for the BC liberal leadership is like nine months long. As of now, it had already, mm-hmm. it's like, it, it's been a year or it will have, will be a year in total. So um, yeah. that is a marathon. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see. I know I'm like, with like the COVID context going on, like it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see how these leaders take on the race because we can't meet in person so they can't travel and there's probably going to be a lot of zoom calls happening or town halls happening or whatever yeah but Um, in a 2022 world a 2022 world hopefully i'm counting on 2022 personally to be fingers crossed (laughs) covid 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 gone that's my at least and i mean i say that as a very we say that with a privileged position knowing that there are parts of the world right now who are in really dire straits um yeah but you know hopefully things um get back to more 
normal in Canada and the rest of the world very soon. Yeah. So I hope so. Fingers crossed. But I'm sending my best thoughts and prayers to everybody who's been affected by COVID. Um, yes. I had it back in December and it was not fun. My whole family had it. So, mm. and we had a mild symptoms of it. So I can't imagine what it's like for all those that are being hit harder than us. Right? Yeah. It's a very tragic time for, um, for individuals and families and those that have been separated. And um, I now get a lot of joy from watching um, reunion videos from grandparents and um, their small right? grandchildren. Yes. It's like, it's just um, so heartwarming to see that. It's the equivalent of watching when they have at the puck drop at a hockey game and they have, they reuni- reunite the military families. It's like yes. that. I'm like, exactly this like is that. the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And yeah, exactly. yeah, it's really special. But so I want to thank you for being on Elected Amplify. The first amplification person, Amrit Brar, is um, a star in terms of youth politics in Canada. And I definitely think that we will hear your name in more ways in the future. Um, thank you. No, it's, it's a really true. I believe this. Um, so please keep working as hard. You work so hard. Um, and without even a partisan lens, again, this is the kind of thing that if we want to see more women elected in politics and in, in roles in government and in politics, then we need to celebrate. We need to celebrate women, no matter what party they come from. Um, if they, exactly. and I think it's, and I think it's hard that like, or not hard. I think it's funny that sometimes we always forget to take off our partisan hat and just mm-hmm. celebrate all the great work that women have done, regardless of what party they're from. Mm-hmm. You may not agree with them, but they've done such amazing work um, for women within their parties or within their yeah. writings, right? So yeah. um, it's super important that you take off your partisan lens and take and admire all the women who have trailblazed and made pathways for us um, to make sure that we have a voice at that table and making sure that we're um, using that voice and uh, representing our um, interests and, or not our interests, but people's interests the best way that we can, right? That is perfectly said. And I think the perfect place to leave this. So Amrit, I want to wish you all the best in all of your very interesting and time consuming roles. And again, thank you so much for coming on elected. It's been a pleasure talking to you today and I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. You're welcome. This was Elected. Thanks for listening today. And of course, a special thank you to Amrit Brar, Elected's first Amplify guest. Subscribe to and listen to Elected on the Orca Podcast Network on all major streaming channels. Next week, my guest will be Katie Merrifield, a former director of communications to BC Premier Christy Clark. And most recently, she served as the executive director of communications to Alberta Premier Jason Kenney. Join us in conversation as we talk women and politics and everything else. Until next time.